We rub out anybody. Mitches. Half price. The crazy world of offensive cartoons. Hey, you guys seen my son? Well, I done seen about everything, but I sure enough ain't seen your boy know how. Ah, Is that supposed to be black people? Fashion family racism. Wow. All of you, you're all banned. Banned, banned, banned. Chowder? You ever watch something and just think? Why oh my gosh. Make it? See, I was about to say this cartoon or this animation used to terrify me as a kid. Why is there a dog twerking on my screen right now? Why are we sexualizing dogs? I never understood this show, bro. This show was just demonic. Why did they make it? How could they make it? And am I going to get in trouble for watching it? Now, I watch anime, so I have this thought every me day. Too. But cartoons are Whoa. no stranger to this too. From all the way back in the day, all the way up to now, people just keep messing up. Back what is then, happening? They could just burn some film, but now with the internet, your sins will remain for all to see. That is true. I won't apologize. And there Stand is business. so much dirt we have to dig up. From racist stereotypes to I already made a video on that. circumstances, there are a lot of cartoons that they don't want you to see. The sun shines bright in my what the heck was that? Oh, the ghost is in days after me. Please don't pay me now. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, bro. What is this? Why is her hair like that? Why is her voice like that? Why did she move around like that? It's so many questions. Oh, the ghost is in days after me. Please don't pay Why she gotta be crazy? Like a crazy black woman. Why we what gotta do that? What was that? Let's start off That's with one I'm of asking. the oldest examples and one of the most egregious. I'm serious. I hadn't even downloaded them yet and I could still smell them. <laughs> Looney Tunes has had their fair share of unmentionables. They made a whole episode of Toon Heads just talking about all the propaganda they had their hands on. When America entered World War II, the young cartoon stars of Hollywood banded together to help fight the Axis. Wait a second. What's happening here? Something. I'm. Is something going on here? I just cannot put my finger on it, but I know this is a reference to something. To help fight the Axis powers, Germany, Japan, and Italy proved to be formidable foes, but they were no match for the likes of Daffy Duck, Bugs Bunny, and Papa. Bugs Bunny, what's the who's? And don't look smug, Disney. I saw how you had Donald coming, but the group of shorts that I was real talk about are basically famous for how offensive they are. The censored eleven, as they've come to be I've known, are eleven discreet cartoons that, if my notes are correct, were painted with hate. Well, one of brothers usually tries. See, to chat. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. As much as y'all think this is racist, hear me out. If you was to draw a black person, do we not look like that? I'm not trying to start. Nothing. Them, but imagine you're not really that good at drawing and you drew a black person if i was to draw a black person it would be very accurate to this right here to be known are 11 discreet cartoons that if my notes are correct were painted with hate well one of brothers usually tries to practice at least a little transparency with their more risque cartoons there's a reason they keep whoopee around these are under a strict no viewing policy in mm -hmm. fact, after Ted Turner got the rights to all the Lee Tunes and MGM shorts, he personally swore that these cartoons would never see the light of day. These cartoons included oh. Angel Puss, Tin Pan Alley Cats, Hidden the Trail for Hallelujah Land, Clean Pastures, Uncle Tom's Bungalow, Cold Black and the Seven Dwarves, Goldilocks and the Jiving Bears. Wait, what? Wait, what the fu- Hold on, bro. You said Coral Black? Coal Black and the Serp Seven What? Coal Black and the Seven Doors. Seven. What does seven even mean? Hitting the trail for Hallelujah Land. That has to be racist somehow, some way. Coal Black and the Seven Dwarves. Goldilocks and the Jiving Bears. The, the Jiving Bears is Pongo, crazy. Pongo, all this in Rabbit Stew. Sunday Go to Meeting Time. And Jungle Jitters. When I started the watching these, the craziest title is the Jiving Bears. Much. When you watch as many cartoons as I do, racist imagery just kind of becomes white noise after a point. You know, like Tom and Jerry. And Tom and Jerry. And Tom and Jerry. Do we need have a talk this show is about <laughs> a cat and a mouse i didn't hear any mention of a crow but anyway i'm no stranger to this stuff but even then some that's of the this stuff bears. is pretty shocking i'm talking watermelon out the wazoo some of the craziest characters that's the seven dwarf stain that's called black look at her 
designs this side of a John K cartoon and some of the most nonsensical stories I have ever laid witness to. I am glad though, I what hate the these hell? being racist and boring. That is the thing about these though. Some of them are really entertaining. Mostly in a, I can't believe they let these things. I don't know who this is supposed to be, but this looks like Langston Hughes to me. I don't know why that's the first name that came to my mind when I seen this character on screen. Who is this chat? air kind of way but some of them in a this is kind of funny way at their core these are still looney tunes so you're gonna get some good gags and great that animation. is a deal like if you ignore the fact that this is a stereotype it basically plays out like any other bugs bunny cartoon this one just happens to also set us back as a species what y'all got there man it couldn't be a pair of them. My issue isn't how they draw us. It's the way they depict us. Why is this kid so stupid? What was he even trying to say to Bugs? Then you have ones like Cold Black and the Seven Dwarves, which despite appearances, was actually made with good intentions. See? I told y'all, they just couldn't draw. He the just looks like a short, the nigga. legendary Bob Clampett made this one after he was approached by an all black musical group who asked why there were no wanted cartoons with black characters. Clampett was friends with a lot of black jazz musicians in the LA scene and he wanted to work with and honor them in a cartoon. In Cold Black you get to see caricatures of them and they even voice the characters. Though Mel Blanc's contract made it so that he received sole credit for all the voice work. What? That rabbit. Bob also wanted an all black band that scored the cartoon, but the request was denied, with the sole exception being the final kiss scene, which was scored by Eddie Beals and his orchestra. Bob also directed Tin Pan Alley Cats, which took a lot of in- See chat, I told y'all, some of these cartoons have good intentions. It just comes off racist now because y'all so sensitive. If y'all was in the 1900s drawing black people, y'all know damn well y'all be drawing stuff like this. The only problem I have is the way they depict us, bro. Yeah, we look weird. Yeah, we're caricatures. It looks like Jim Crow, but they didn't really have much to work with. This is the first time they ever drew a colored person. <laughs> which took a lot of inspirations from his previous short, Porky and Wacky Land. This one is really important to me specifically because it is the birthplace of one of my most favorite and stupid gags. Rubber band. I don't care, man. That is funny. The rest of these are mostly just what shocking the heck? or full-blown nonsense. But I honestly think they're worth a watch. Just to see what was able to fly back then. I'm not really a fan of hiding away stuff like this. We rub out anybody. Mitch's half price. Hell is hot. I tell you, boys and girls. Hell is hot. The rest of these are mostly just shocking or full-blown nonsense, but I honestly think they're worth a watch. Just to see what was able to fly back then. I'm not really a fan of I don't know what away Jap stuff is. like this. Oh, I'm not saying they should start Japanese coming on person. right after Craig of the Creek, but I think historically, they should be preserved somewhere other than the internet archive. Most of what these cartoons they may not be preserved so start coming on right after Craig of the Creek, but I think historically, they should be preserved somewhere How'd other he get than color? the internet archive. Most of what these cartoons have to offer is absolutely drenched in the racism of the time. And although some people might defend them as products she of the time, she ain't got no hips, no ass. Very racist. That's like saying eggs are the products of chickens, which some of these cartoons thought we were guzzling down by the buck buck bucket. But there's also what? some genuinely good things these have to offer. These were some of the first depictions of black characters in a cartoon like this. They That's what I was saying. I was saying culture, that. Music, religion, and celebrities. And even though most of it hasn't aged the best, they're still very important. So put them up on HBO Max. But um, maybe give I'm them their never own watching section. these cartoons. You know, keep them separate. But are you telling me they just switch skin colors i know i'm tripping right so put them up on hbo Chat, Max, look at these skin colors but, um, maybe give them their own section you know keep them separate but equal i see what you did there separate but equal you know lil wayne once said black and white diamonds segregation i don't know why i said that i just feel like you needed to know that for some reason maybe give them their own section you know keep them separate but equal Wait, 
I'm not supposed to dance to this. It might be offensive to my new people. Okay. Welcome to the 90s, motherfucker. All right. For these next couple of shows, let's flash forward to the 90s. By this point, we were long past the days of shows made purely to get you to buy toys and eat vegetables. Okay. You can't eat those fries. <laughs> this show looks familiar. A lot more that show looks familiar. A lot more gross and a lot more risque. I still can't believe some of the stuff they got off. One of the more famous shows to push what you could show in a kid's cartoon was Rocco's Modern Life. They Never had seen a it. ton of jokes that they just had to straight up remove, at least in America. From the famous hotline scene, to having a restaurant's name be changed from Chokey Chicken to Chewy Chicken, they were straight up just acting up over there. You're a nasty man, Joe Murray, and I love you chicken. for it. However, Ugh. the most famous episode that got the axe was Leapfrogs. In this episode, the Big Heads I've are going this. through a rough patch in their marriage. Probably because Mr. Big Head is only using his tongue to catch flies. So, feeling... Oh, I thought you said using his cum to catch flies. Thank God I have ears on today. Whoa, this conversation will have been very different. In this episode, the Big Heads are going through a rough patch in their marriage. Probably because Mr. Big Head is only using his tongue to catch flies. So, feeling unwanted and unloved, mm. Mrs. Big Head tries to seduce poor Rocco, much to his dismay. <laughs> Oh. There are some wild jokes in here. There's a part where she slips Spanish fly into his drink. He actually rips her dress off and sees her greener pastures. They even watch a documentary about the toad mating cycle. She's trying to get smacked. Oh. Isn't he underage? I don't know how old Rocco is, but I would assume that's a grown woman. She's trying to pick up cupcakes and shit at his... <laughs> they even watch a documentary about the toad this is mating grooming. cycle. That's the word. Rocco, you're getting groomed! Get away from me. Your titties are hanging out. Honestly, I don't what? even know how they thought any of this would fly. And after numerous complaints from parents, the episode was pulled. Oh. Joe Murray even talked about it on a behind-the-scenes feature. Needless to say, the episode got some complaints from some parents. And, uh, it was banned for a while from the air. But Rocco wasn't the only nasty 90s cartoon pushing the envelope. Are you the Dr. Junk? This show is hilarious. The same. Oh, it would be an honor to squirt for you. Oh, right, let's shit. Take about 20 off there, Squirrely Dan. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Cow and Chicken was another show that liked the test standards. I like and Cow and Chicken. But I'm going to be talking about it in detail soon, so let's just get to the main event. Okay. Buffalo Gals was an episode that focused on a group of up as nails ladies who, in the show's words, a motorcycle riding gang that randomly bursts into people's homes and chews on their carpet. I am not a subtle. Chews on their carpet. Chew on your carpet means to eat pussy, right? They randomly break into people's houses and eat pussy. Well, goddamn, that sounds like a great time if you ask me. <laughs> Of course, all of this is a very obvious lesbian joke, with the girls playing softball and one of them being named Munch Ellie. At this Munch point, the Kelly? only sub in that text is Carla. It's just her nature. Surprisingly, the writer of the story for this episode, Bill Burnett, claimed that he never intended for any of the lesbian jokes to be in it. He just wanted to write a story Cat. where a bunch of strong women took Cal under their wing. Turns Cat. out that most of the other jokes were added by the creator of the show. Oh. David Feist, who okay. has since apologized, saying that he was just trying to be silly. Outside of the lesbian jokes, it's mostly just your standard episode of Cow and Chicken. At least this one got the air, unlike a certain episode of Dexter's Lab. Really? Now, I talked about this one more in my feature length Dexter's Lab video, but Rude Removal was an episode that most people... This man is butt is out. Hey, True God, edit, editing True God. Go ahead and censor that man booty cheeks, bro. What the hell? A full episode of Dexter that features him and Dee Dee swearing up a storm? That just reeks of playground rumors. Real my dad it was real? Nintendo vibes. But no, the episode was real. It was even shown by Gindy at certain conventions. And after years of campaigning to see it, people finally got a chance to when it was announced to be airing on Adult Swim. To be honest, I wish they had just 
just dropped it without any warning. It would have been way funnier no to just see a random episode of Dexter cursing his mom out. What I really want to see though is an uncensored cut. I'm one of the people that find censored swears funnier than normal ones, but the novelty of hearing Chucky Finster say a gamer word is a dream too sweet Facts. not to want. I there agree. have been some uncensored versions made by fans, but I still need the real deal. Facts. It probably doesn't exist, but hey, we didn't even know the episode was real, so I'm holding out. Anytime there's a show where characters aren't supposed to be cussing and someone does like a voiceover or a parody and they're cussing, for some reason, that's the funniest type of content to me. I love stuff like that. Almost there. Just keep smiling and moving. What the heck? <laughs> Damn. They just, just keep on lady. Besides stuff Growing. that was banned for racist imagery or because the writers play too much, there are some episodes that are only banned because they thought kids wouldn't be able to handle what was being shown. Like in an episode of Braceface called Busted. You're busted. This episode follows old <laughs> Tinsel Teeth as she starts feeling like puberty might be ghosting. Is that her name? Tinsel Teeth? Oh <laughs> my gosh. What is happening, bro? Please don't name nobody that ever again. Busted. You're busted. This episode follows old Tinsel Teeth as she starts feeling like puberty might be ghosting her. Don't worry about it, sweetie. She want puberty? The women in my family have always been late bloomers. We fill out eventually, though. I was shaped just like you at your age, and I turned out fine. Nah. That's Cap. Well, thank you for agreeing. This leads to her <laughs> purchasing a bra that, uh... Well, let's just say it pushes things along. Well, yes, the concept of buying an inflatable bra that makes this happen is pretty silly. The episode actually does a great job at showing how body issues can affect a young girl. Sharon yeah. hates that people keep mistaking her for a kid, and she thinks the only way She's she grown can up. feel mature is by having the kind of body she thinks mature people have. But even after this, she still faces problems. Boys start leering at her, people start assuming things, and at the end, she's like, they show that on TV. All oh, he was trying to fuck his problems. Boys start leering at her. People start assuming things. And at the end, she's left humiliated after her bra malfunctions. This isn't the kind of episode that should be banned. This is the. <laughs> Imagine you at. <laughs> Imagine you at lunch and you see a girl with one big ass titty. <laughs> Bro, they gonna flame our ass up, bro. Love your body. Love your body for what it is. Don't put fake boobs in, bro. It's not worth it. This isn't the kind of episode that should be banned. This is the kind that should be shown all the time. I, when I you agree. Hide stuff away like this, instead of kids learning to feel comfortable with themselves by walking a mile in Sharon's shoes, they'll be just as scared and confused as we were when we were kids. I think this is a pretty good episode, though, and it definitely deserves to still be shown. Mm. There are some crazy scenes though and speaking of crazy scenes ain't no way tm 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 nt ah! This next one is also a very good episode that got pulled for being a smidge too graphic. TMNT 03's Insane in the Membrane. This episode How follows you find Baxter this? Stockman, a scientist enslaved by the Shredder. As the show went on, every enslaved? time Baxter failed, Shredder took a little bit away from him. And He's black. And I here, the torso there, until nothing remained but a brain. This episode shows his quest to get a new body, as well as shining a light on how he came to be so pitiful. While at first, Things seem to go well with the new body. As time goes on, it starts to melt oh! and decay until Baxter is left as nothing more than a monster. It's He's a Terminator. It's kind of shocking. And besides the body horror, the look into Stockman's past was actually kind of touching. He was always portrayed as this ruthless egomaniac. Who can relate? But this <laughs> episode helped to humanize him. I didn't see this episode until way later in life, even though I used to watch this show religiously. That's because it never aired on TV. Back mm. when it was being made, everything was moving smoothly. Storyboards, animation, editing, every part was finished and approved. But while the work on the episode was going on, there was a change in staff with Fox's standards and practices. 
While the old team was fine with the episode, the new one saw it and was disgusted. It's a shame too, because with how dark this show used to get, I honestly think kids would have been able to handle it. This is the same show that had an episode where all of the turtles died. Plus, kids really? back then were raised on some messed up stuff. This like is really crazier than your average Invader Zim episode. Nah, was never sh Invader Zim was hilarious, bro. Still one of my favorite shows of all time. I love Invader Zim. But I don't remember Invader Zim them getting that deep or like that dark i just remember it being hella funny this isn't any crazier than your average invader zim episode while it was never shown for the longest time it has since aired on nicktoons it is available on the dvds say i smell bacon does anyone else smell bacon i smell bacon yeah, dude <laughs> i definitely smell a pork product of some type like Arthur? Funny enough, it wasn't just shows like these that ended up having episodes banned. Baby shows took a couple of hits now and then too, like Bubble Guppies. Really? A show I have a very vague memory of. The episode, The Police Competition, was banned after the George Floyd protest. Man, between this and Paw Patrol, Nick Jr. has a major propaganda problem. I mean, just look at those faces. You know they say Blue Lives Matter. <laughs> you just didn't know pigs could swim. The crazier example actually happened in Arthur. In the episode, episode The Great McGrady. I remember when I was a kid, this was a big deal. Arthur had never been a stranger to heavier topics, getting lost, pets dying, a very well done 9-11 episode. So when this episode revealed that Mrs. McGrady, a very established character, had cancer, you knew it was going to be important. Okay. And after watching it again, it's still a very good episode. They show how all the different characters deal with someone they love getting sick, with Arthur and DW coddling her, Francine getting so worried that she avoids her and Muffy being in denial about the whole thing, treating it like a cold. I think it's a super engaging and important piece of media for kids. And I thought that it would be on air forever to help kids who might be dealing with a family member with a terminal illness. And it probably would have been if it hadn't been for one thing. Arthur always had a strange habit of including celebrities into the show. Mm. At its best, you get the Mr. Rogers episode, which might be the most wholesome thing put on television. That's and Mr. Rogers? Worse, you get this. Yes. Hi, does an Arthur Reed live here? Who the hell is that? Matt Damon. That's Matt anyway, Damon. This episode had a cameo by a celebrity who was also dealing with cancer. One Lance Armstrong. You know, the bike guy. What could possibly go wrong with using such a well respected and trusted sports icon? Oh man. Yeah. Wait, what happened? Dropping what? Lance Armstrong's doping drugs. Where have I been? Why have I never heard of this? I know who Lance Armstrong is. He rode bikes and shit. I know anybody that rides anything. Why the fuck did I know about him doing drugs? Did Michael Phelps do drugs too? For some reason, that's in the... <laughs> That's in the back of my head. I heard Michael Phelps did some type of drug. Yeah, it turns out after years of denial, Lance Armstrong was finally caught using performance enhancing drugs. PDs. Wins. Sounds like this guy is a real dope. Anyway, because of the scandal, PBS decided to pull the episode, and yeah, I get it. You don't want a guy who's been lying for years and cheating at sports teaching your kids lessons, but he's such a small part of the episode. The That's main what I'm stuff saying. featuring the kids dealing with Mrs. McGrady is all still really good. Plus, do kids even care that he cheated? I didn't even care who he was when I watched it. This was just another square chinned rabbit to me. The real <laughs> sick thing is that this wasn't even his only Arthur appearance. He really? was in episode in the season before this one. They had to get both of those things out of here. Lance Armstrong never quit. He never quit the Tour de France. He never quit lying about his steroid use, and he still hasn't totally come clean. <laughs> but eventually, PBS realized that maybe this episode was a little too important to show, and instead of just putting a disclaimer on it, which I swear could have fixed most of these shows, they instead decided to go the extra mile. Kinda. They completely reanimated the episode in that gross flash style and removed Lance completely, replacing him with the in-universe celebrity wrestler Uncle Slam. At first why? I thought, why not just use another celeb that beat cancer? But they did the smarter thing. I mean, it's pretty hard for a cartoon character that they made to take steroids, you know, unless they draw it. And I'm pretty sure Juicy Juice wouldn't approve of that. Were they still funding Arthur at this point? Them and Chuck E. Cheese kept me more educated than the public school system ever did. Anyway, 
Jedi, they redid the whole thing, which is one of the reasons that this episode looks better than most from the Flash era. They basically copied the old one, same layouts and everything, just kinda worse now. I don't know, I'm glad they put the episode back out there, even in this newer, grosser state, but it still feels like they wasted a lot of contributions from viewers like you. Fuck you. Wow. Wow. I was so happy to be part of something and you just said, fuck me. Okay. Let's move up a level back into the big kid shows. We're looking at two Spot of Cartoon Bob. Network's and Nickelodeon's heaviest I love hitters that holy with Spongebob and the Powerpuff Girls. Now with shows like this that run for actual decades, there's no way you're not going to so make many something gaping that holes. the wrong way. At that point, you just kind of start doing stuff on purpose, you know, just to see if you won't get caught. What the Wait heck? a second. Ah, you got me. You got me. <laughs> but even those unkillable we got giants him. had a couple of pills that standards and practices couldn't swallow. Speaking of... Damn! Barnacles, I hate the pill. For Spongebob, it's the episode Was he putting that pill at? Now, this is one of my most watched episodes of the show. It came on all the time, and I also had it on my video now. What is video now? What the heck is that? Ugh. Ew, ancient technology. Well, God, it was so uh, simple back then. A black and white video screen the size of a Yu-Gi-Oh card was all it took to make me happy. But this one is a classic as far as I'm concerned. It follows Mr. Krabs as he hangs out with Patrick and Spongebob in an attempt to regain his you. And from then on, the jokes just roll in in full force. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? The fake Chuck E. Cheese? Patrick riding that me. guy? I hope I put visuals there or that's gonna sound wild. But overall, it's nothing too out there until Patrick makes a little suggestion to get Mr. Krabs pumped. I guess you're gonna miss the panty raid. The what? So when I was I've a kid, seen this episode. Really it got banned. I just knew that it had something to do with underwear and pranking girls, which are two of the funniest things in the world to a small boy. But the older I get, the crazier this scene gets. This is something Patrick and Spongebob imply they do all the time. Facts. Like they just go through bikini bottom stealing panties on the reg? What the heck is that about? <laughs> Not to mention that it turns <laughs> out that the one house they hit a lot turns out to be Mr. Krabs' mom. I can't help your mom's <laughs> guilt. Oh, that's it. Yeah, I said it. Stop. Imagine stealing your boss's wait. mom's underwear. Them two people gotta... Wait, is that Kevin Hart? Gilf? Oh, that's it. Yeah, I said it. Stop. Imagine that's Kevin Hart and the other guy that reminds me of Kevin Hart. That's crazy. I didn't know they had a movie together. Up to be Mr. Krabs' mom. I can't help your mom as a gilf. Oh, that's it. Yeah, I said it. Stop. Imagine stealing your boss's mom's underwear once a week. Boss makes a dollar <laughs> while I make a dime. That's why I commit a federal crime. I thought I was going to go into this section like, this isn't a big deal. They overreacted. No. Jail. Now. Do I still think it's funny, though? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Freaking Spongebob stealing granny panties. I gotta laugh. I'm only human. But maybe they should have kept this one in the drafts. What y'all think, chat? I think it's a perfect episode. Loved it. Are they remaking Powerpuff Girls? There's just too many of them for me to fight. Okay. Moving on to Powerpuff Girls, we have See Me, Feel Me, Know Me. Now, this one I didn't watch until I was in college, I like after song. seeing it in a Paul Dugan video. It's always crazy when you see a new episode of a show that you are positive you've seen every episode of. Unlike most of the stuff I've talked about so far, this one still has never aired in the United States. Really? Which is a shame because I really like it. Rain, rain, I like the song, I might watch it. It sound great. Like a little depressing episode, you know, when I get sad, I can watch it. I'm a lot more forgiving towards the later half of Powerpuff Girls than I am with Dexter. At worst, the most these get are kind of gross and boring. What I'm not the heck usually is actively annoyed watching these. I still hate that overly digital look it can have sometimes, though. But this one is fun. The city of Townsville's going down. Oh, it's a bunch of songs? I like E. I like E. 
It's a rock opera styled episode, so all the characters are constantly singing. Good way to get me on board. I love stuff like this. And there are some bangers in here. I'm glad they got most of the voice actors to just sing instead of getting more professional sounding singers. This stuff just adds charm. You don't want to hear Mojo Jojo belt out a power ballad. Sorry you suck. <laughs> The plot follows the girls. I kind of like this episode. After defending Poundsville for so long, with no end in sight to all the villainy. Just when all hope seems lost, a magical flower descends from the sky and produces a gnome that promises to get rid of all the evil in the world in exchange for the girls' powers. Is this, is this the last episode? You gonna zap my girl power out? Suck her up? The fuck? Suck the power away from them? Why he get naked? And they start singing. This sounds like a Guitar Hero song. I, I know y'all hear it, bro. Imagine this song on Guitar Hero. At first, everything seems to go well, but eventually, the girl see that in exchange for his protection, the gnome has also taken away the people's agency. And while the world may seem to be a utopia now, agency? everyone is basically in a cult dedicated to the gnome and his flower. It's kind of an interesting idea. Would you give up everything that made you you in exchange for an easy and safe life? Is it no. more important to survive or to live? This episode does a pretty good job exploring that idea. Well, at least until the end where it devolves into we just need to appreciate our differences and get along message. there it is that's uh, how you stop me, racism that doesn't work when the thing that makes a guy different than me is that he is the literal devil don't think i can get along with that also i don't need any competition there's no dark without the light there's no dim without the blood. now why was this one banned? For a while, there were a lot of reasons people believed. Some people believed it promoted communism with all the red clothes and the new I didn't way see of that. life. Some people thought it was because of all the strobing lights that might trigger epilepsy. But okay, I in a Tumblr that. post, Craig McCracken finally confirmed that the episode was banned because there is a scene where some destroyed buildings look a little too close to crosses, paired up with an incidental that resembles Jesus. Nah. This was never... That's exactly what it resembles. You cannot not a lot of us bro that is definitely jesus that's hippie jesus right there he got the sandals on and everything these definitely look like crosses in the background who are you fooling who are you fooling bro we're not dumb this is jesus this was never the intention of the crew and the yeah. fact that it happens continues to be a baffling decision to craig and now i'm mad they could have played this one with all the other musical episodes on cartoon network and we could have had a fun little day ah well at least the episode is still was that communist so you oh, know no, Dexter? give it a watch you get to see the professor beat some meat <laughs> <laughs> beat me the universe above me all right, before we get to the last cartoon, let's do a quick speed run through the hit of the 90s and frequent thorn in the Catholic Church's side, Pokemon. Beauty in the Beach. It got banned for making James too hot. Electric Wait, Soldier what Porygon. The? Hold this the one had up. James is a boy? Hold on, bro. I feel like I've been lied to my whole life. Why does James have tits? I knew he was sexy, but I didn't know he was a girl. I'm not gay. Yo, chat. I'm not gay. I beat the allegations today, bro. The whole time I thought he was a sexy nigga. But in reality, he's just a bitch. Man, it's a good day to live out here, man. You know what I'm saying? I seen everything I needed to see. I'm confirmed not a dick sucker. <laughs> Let's do a quick speed run through the hit of the 90s and frequent thorn in the Catholic Church's side, Pokemon. Beauty in the Beach. It got banned for making James too hot. Electric Soldier Porygon. This one had people getting a little too lit with all the flashing colors. Holiday Hijinks. And also just any episode that had the old design for Jinx. One look at her tells you why this one raised a few eyebrows. The it like Jim Crow. Bikini, shelf because Ash, no joke, has a gun pointed in his face. And finally, Tentacool and Tentacruel, which was banned after 9-11 for all the buildings getting destroyed, bringing up some unpleasant thoughts. This one to me is the craziest because it is literally in the theme song, specifically the part that would make you think of 9-11. There are more, but honestly, you can make a whole video about them. I won't though. Barely know anything about Pokemon. <laughs> more of a Monsuno kid myself. What is this? Okay, drink this. Hell no! It's milk. 
It's where you come it's from. It's not milk. I just it's, like the case it comes in. It's not milk. Okay, before we end this video, there's one more episode I want to talk about, and it's one of my favorite shows. Aqua Teen Hunger Force is the Adult Swim show. One of the network's biggest success stories. There have been a few ups and downs, but hey, what's a bomb scare between friends? Anyway, out of all the episodes, the one I want to talk about today is Shake Like Me. First off, wild hmm. title. Naming it after Black Black Like Me, a book written by a white know guy was a who poses as a black guy for months is that. a bold choice. The episode focused on Shake, who gets melanated after being bit by a radioactive black man. And a radioactive ask, nigga. Yes, that is how we make more black people. Jerry is still out on whether we work by vampire rules or werewolf rules, though. We see Shake as he And now he get grills, a chain, and big lips. And is this straw supposed to be a pick? It might come off offensive, but to me, this is just hilarious. I can't be mad at this dumb shit, bro. This this tomfoolery. We see Shake as he adjusts to his new life as Mocha Shaka, the first dairy Mocha. product to ever have to use Blue Magic Hair Gel. Now, I want to make <laughs> one thing clear. This episode is hilarious. Look at it this. It is so funny seeing Shake act like this. And even if Dana Snyder probably shouldn't be talking like this. Hold on, chat. Do me and Shake, do me and Mocha Shake look similar? Skin color, big ass lips. If I put an afro on, I look just like this Shake, bro. It is so funny seeing Shake act like this. And even if Dana Snyder probably shouldn't be talking like this. You can't whitewash me with your lies. I'm black and I'm proud. And I will make sure it reads that in both gold and diamonds on my teeth, yo. How can you get I've never seen a delivery? problem with stuff like but this. As funny as it is, with the way the world is right now, it is definitely the right call to keep this one off the air. I still think you should be able to watch it on like streaming or DVD, maybe with a message before it, but it probably shouldn't be on TV. You just can't jump scare someone with this one. A big part of the reason it was removed from TV and HBO Max is because of the George Floyd protests. Mm. And just an overall concern that this episode would make people think of blackface. And yeah, race issues are in a super bad it's spot a right now. We don't really got the wiggle room to tell these kind of jokes right now. And I know I'm going to get some comments saying that comedy is dead, but those are going to be for people who apparently missed the part where I said it's funny. Just maybe not the right <laughs> time for it. Either way, this is a great episode. And I hope that we as a people are one day in a place where we can all laugh at it together. I'm gonna still laugh at it by myself though. This thing is funny. And those are a <laughs> bunch of cartoons that I shouldn't be able to watch.